Hello! So today's video is going to have a two-fold agenda. Number one, I'm going to try on everything I own from Kaleidos Cosmetics, which is everything that, in my personal opinion, is worth getting from the brand. I acquired all these products earlier this year and I haven't been able to try them yet and I'm going to do so on camera. I'm going to do a full face of Kaleidos and see what I think. This is going to be a first impressions video. Secondly, I want to talk about some of the PR disasters that certain brands have been facing and I want to talk about how they maybe could have managed it better, maybe brainstorm some other strategies that could have been used. Feel free to drop a comment if you want to participate in the discussion. Also, please subscribe so I know you're interested in this kind of content and let's get started. So I've always wanted to try Kaleidos Cosmetics, but for some reason I was never able to prioritize them over other things that I wanted. And finally, earlier this year, I thought I should get everything. Everything that I've been missing out on. And so I got pretty much everything that I wanted from the brand. So as I showed you, I have the Escape Pod. I have this Futurism set that is being discontinued, I think, or maybe already is. I have five blushes from their previous line, not from their new launch. Not going to pick that up. And I also have some lip clay waltz. These are beautiful. I also have this giant thing. This is the Encyclopedia of Kaleidos Space Age Highlighters. This is the giant package. It has these very scientific looking diagrams on it. Very cool. Two of these, I believe, are multi-chromes. The rest are nice, shimmery, sparkly highlighters. And I'm excited to try all of this on. Of course, I won't be able to put everything on, but I will just do a full face and get a feeling for what the brand is like and what's so special about it, why people like this brand. Because honestly, I think I've been missing out. So this is the tone activator from Kaleidos. This is an eye primer, apparently. You could get this for free with, I believe, what was it? The Futurism Collection. Let's put it on. Ooh, it's very, like a light foundation kind of thing. It's coming out of the tube bit messy. I'm gonna wipe this off. Don't like messy shits. No, I do not. Okay, so we have that. Now let's open the escape pod. As far as I know, the escape pod is their only colorful eyeshadow palette currently. I always see so many comments on Instagram saying bring us some more colorful eyeshadow palettes but we are still to see any from the brand. I actually wanted the Flower Punk palette as well but that's been out of stock for a long time and honestly by now I don't think it's gonna be brought back. Maybe there wasn't demand for it. I don't know. Now I like this palette but it's not perfect. I think that's why I wasn't initially gone too much. These two colors I would switch out. I would also switch out this shade. It's too similar to the orange up here. But the rest seem okay. I'm going to use this and combine all the Futurism palettes. The Futurism palettes on the other hand I prefer just a little bit more. This one is so pretty. The light lavenders. Beautiful. And the shimmers look amazing too. I don't mind this one either. This is the Sashimi City. This has actually one gold shade which is very shifty and there's a copper that has a lot of pink in there. So yes to those. There used to be a bright colors one but I wasn't too drawn to it. This is also the bomb. Look at that. This is like a evening eyeshadow palette. Very beautiful. What a color story. Tealy grains with a pop of orange. Just lovely. I think I'm just gonna mix them all together, but it's a lot of options. Let me think this through. So I have decided on a course of action and 
Let's go. So this is how the eye look came out. I really like it. So what I noticed was that the formula is really good. I used all the three shimmers from the Futurism palettes and mattes from both the Futurism palettes and the Escape Pod. I think the Escape Pod has mattes that are just a little bit more pigmented, but otherwise everything performed really well and I am loving this look. What I want to do now is move on to blush. So I have the choice of five blushes here. This is Dreamwalk. I believe this one is Ecstasy. Let me actually look up the other three because I do not remember them. These two are Sanguine and Sunbird. For some reason, the lights are really drowning out the color. This is a nice bright orange. And this one is a red. This warm brown kind of blush is called Joyride. Now I want to go for Ecstasy here, but because I'm kind of over all the lilac y pink kind of blushes, I don't want to go to a monochromatic for this look either. So I'm going for Ecstasy, the light coral shade. These days I enjoy coral blushes more rather than those cool pink tones. Yep, I very much prefer this over the cool tone pink. Now that we're doing blush, let's talk about Kaleido's latest collection, the Alma Viva collection. If you follow the makeup community, you will know that people said that they were very disappointed in the blush shades they chose. Let's read up a little about it. So if you've been out of the loop, Kaleidos launched their Alma Viva collection recently and they came out with four blush shades which look like this. So far I've watched a couple of reviews and even medium skin people or even light medium skin, they're saying these are not going to show up on their skin tone. So clearly for someone like me who's a deeper medium and anyone who's deeper than that, it's going to be an absolute no for them. The majority of the comments say that this should have been an inclusive launch. They should have maybe included one or two shades for deeper skin tones. But there are some people sprinkled in there who say that pale people don't have a lot of options and this collection gives them four different options and that's great. Do I believe that every collection, every brand launches needs to be 
or must be targeted to everyone, every skin tone across the spectrum. Personally, I don't think they need to, but in the current environment, you should be mindful of how this will be perceived. So it's more of a reputation risk, not providing an explanation or handling it tactfully. That is more of a risk than the actual products. Because when Kaleidos launched this, they knew that these products will not work on a lot of skin tones and they were prepared to take that risk. Many people are saying that Kaleidos is trying to get a foothold in their Asian markets and this is their way of targeting the Asian customer who is currently into a trend of very light color blushes, blushes that can kind of double as highlighters. They do say on their Instagram that with the extension of the mono blush line, the nine shade range now expands to include vibrant pigmented shades with soft and subtle new additions. So they're saying that we expanded our range. We didn't intend to exclude anyone. We already have the brighter shades, but now we're adding some more lighter shades, more subtle shades. Personally, I don't think it's necessarily very wrong of them, but it's just a trend. It's just a certain customer segment that they're trying to market to and that's okay. Maybe they could have made just a little bit more effort to present it that way to their international customer base because some people that they're sending PR to, they're really confused and they're saying that these don't work on our skin tones and maybe you should just exclude us from the PR and just targeted the people that you were focusing on in the first place. Maybe Kaleidos should have launched this under the new blush highlight trend. There have been companies in the past that have come out with hybrid products. For example, I seem to recall seeing a blush bronzer kind of hybrid product and people seem to be really into it. Maybe they could have promoted it as a blush highlighter kind of thing and shown this trend on various different models. Maybe people would have responded just a little differently. But that's just my two cents. I think the kind of socio-political environment we're in currently, reputation risk is kind of the biggest risk to companies. I will add the example of Terra Moons here. Their last post on their Instagram was on August 3rd and the day I'm filming it's August 20th. So it's been a fairly long period for them not to be posting anything on their Instagram. There are no stories, no more posts, and the last post was this one. And that whole PR message that you see here, since then they haven't posted. So I don't know exactly the full story because I never go deep into these things. But for those of you who don't know, who were maybe not following this, Terra Moons was planning to collaborate with Crystal Clear Makeup who is an artist, I believe, on Instagram. And I will just read from their own post. It says, It has come to my attention that there are whispers within the beauty community of my being anti-V, anti-mask, and in support of white supremacy groups, and I want to set the record straight. So she goes into detail about what her stance is and all these things. But apparently the backlash from the people was so great that Terra Moons had to disable the comments on their last post because they were saying there is a lot of hate and bullying in the comments and since then they haven't spoken anything about it. Presumably they're sitting and thinking about how to handle this. They are a smaller brand and this kind of PR disasters can be fatal for a company. So. I think they're strategizing on how to handle this, whether they want to go ahead with the collaboration as planned or maybe pull the plug on it. Of course, they would have made an investment into the products and they're probably trying to figure out how best to go about this and not suffer a huge loss as a result of this PR disaster. I'm a business person. I'm talking from a business perspective. Business topics such as these interest me when we do risk assessment in finance or in audit, reputation risk is one of the greatest risks that an auditor has to account for. I studied finance extensively. 
So when valuing a company, there is a reputation factor for valuing a company. And this represents all the goodwill that the company has generated over the year with customers. What I mean to say is that in the current environment where consumers are very emotional about social subjects and doing what is right and voting with their dollar, that is another term that I've come across. It's so important for companies to be very mindful of what they're doing. And if we see Terra Moons as an example, companies may be doing background checks on people that they're planning to collaborate with. It is entirely possible. I feel like I have talked for so long. I am not much of a talker in real life. Introvert. Let's put on some lipstick. My lips are a bit dry. So this box doesn't say anything about what this was. I mean the name of the lip clay vault. So these two are from two separate collections and this one was a customized one. Let me see what I want to wear. Definitely not red. Definitely not a nude. Not feeling the nude today. Purple? Mm. Mm -mm. Mm, I don't want to go too monochromatic, but ooh, who could resist this pink berry goodness? This could ruin everything, but let me just smack it on. So this is Rose Fire. Oh yes, so it does say on the lipstick that the Cloud Lab lip clay from the Willow Wisp vault. And this is Rose Fire. Let's smack it on. Lip clays have a divine formula. I actually swatched a bunch of these to make sure I didn't get any colors that were too close together. This kind of a berry shade is beautiful. For some reason it looks more reddish on camera, but in real life it matches my crease color. It's more berry, not red. So that's amazing. This is phenomenal. It makes your lips very smooth. There are no lines, no little crinkles. It has blurred them. It's amazingly comfortable and it's drying down to a finish that's not too dry. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm a fan. I will say it right now. I am a fan. I know I said I didn't want to do this, but I want to add another shade of blush. This is Dreamwalk with so many blushes coming out. I feel like one just isn't enough. Ooh. Okay, I don't mind that. So I have the pink here. I feel like one of those Kaleidos models on their website that have a lot of blush up here under the eyes. That was kind of what I was going for. Now it looks even better. I love it. So we have two categories of items left. Let's smack them on and then we'll be done. Like the Silly Lily, I can be... I absolutely forgot that I have these Melt-On eyeliners from Kaleidos. These are actually multi-chrome eyeliners. Well, most of them anyway. I am going to swatch them and see which one I want to put in my eyes. I actually put a pink one, but if we have a multi-chrome, why not? So, a few indie brands recently came out with these multi-chrome eyeliners in this kind of format, not the liquid one. And the only one that impressed me packaging-wise 
were these Kaleidos ones. I think Sugar Drizzle came up with some. Then there was, I think, MBA Cosmetics, another indie brand anyway. And these had these customized packaging that caught my attention. And of course, I didn't need to get anything similar after that. So these are the six shades. These are actually very shifty. But some of the multichromes are kind of in the same zones, like this one and this green one. The shifts are different, but kind of the same color family. And then this one and this one, these are also kind of similar. So I do wish for a little bit more variety, something that had maybe more of a fuchsia or bright pink in it, like a pink to green one. But we have a winner and it's this purple one that will hopefully go with our eye look. So let's pop it on. So that is what the eyeliner looks like. I must say though, I'm not going to use these as waterline liners because that is a pathetic use of a multi-chrome liner because the waterline is so tiny, you don't see the effect. For the waterline, I think my ColourPop liners are just fine. But with these, you can do graphic eye looks because that will look very nice. That is exactly how they're meant to be used as per Kaleido's website and their promotional images. And that is what I'm going to use them for. But since I already had my eyeshadow on, that is what we're doing. Okay, let's move on to the big bad encyclopedia. When I got these, I did open them up a little and look through them, but I think I'm gonna do that again and select something that is going to go with this. So I'm definitely going to do one of the two multi-chrome ones. This first one is called Gifted. It says it's a fuchsia highlighter with a peach and blue-green shift. So I do see the blue-green and ooh, I do see the pinky purpley thing as well. But I don't see any peach. I don't want to go blue-green, but I definitely want some pink purple. So I'm going to look at Prophecy. This is the other multi-chrome highlighter. This is apparently a multi-chrome champagne highlighter with supernatural green vermilion fuchsia and lime shifts. Okay, so you had me at fuchsia and lime, but let me see what I can see. So it also has kind of a blue-green thing going on, and then there's a gold. I do not see any fuchsia or purple whatsoever. I think this is going to pull very gold on the cheeks, which could be interesting. Because we have some gold on the lid, which I intended to be like a halo eye kind of look. A spotlight eye, if you will. This might be interesting. Let's go for the non-obvious choice, which is Prophecy. This kind of method never seems to work out for indie brand highlighters, so... I'm just going to use my finger. Also, did I forget to mention that I love these little compacts. Very cute. So, in my collection, what these remind me of are the Unearthly Highlighters. Unearthly Cosmetics launched four single highlighters earlier this year, I think. That is kind of peachy. Not the other one, although the other one's description said it was going to be peachy, but... I don't mind it, I don't mind it. I think this is beautiful.
Okay, now I am curious as to what the other one would have looked like. Okay, that is beautiful. That is like a subtle kind of glow. It's not in your face, but it's beautiful. I love it. And I don't say that easily about indie brand highlighters, if you've been following along. Ooh, that is beautiful. It's like a little bit of a fire. It's like there is fire inside of my skin. And it's showing through. Oh, beautiful. Maybe it's not translating as such to the camera, but in real life, bomb. I can't help it. I'm gonna have to swatch this one as well. Oh wow, this one. By this one, I mean gifted. This one. Wow, that is undeniably shifty. Woof. Look at this. Maybe you can't see the shift on camera, but it is so shifty. It has that pinky purple to a gold green shift. The kind of multi-chrome that we see so often in black base multi-chromes. It's like that, except it's a highlighter. Would it have looked good? Yes. But I want to go for the choice that was not the most obvious one. Although it is breathtaking. Yes, it says breathtaking in the description. I agree. I agree. And it has a very smooth formula. I prefer this formula to the unearthly formula, which was not that smooth on the cheek. This is way more smooth. This is how the colors look together for the multi-chrome highlighters. This one is Gifted and this one is Prophecy. Are the other highlighters a little basic? Yes. Am I still curious about them? Also yes. I think I swatched them when I got them, but I am inclined to do that again. So we have Star Surfer here, which is a rosy champagne and that is exactly what it is. Then we have Mars Melter, which is a peachy base with a magenta red glow. And that is exactly the description I would also give. Then there's a blue one called Skywalker, which is described as an incandescent aqua blue with ultraviolet undertones. That is actually very accurate. Then we have Ray Rider, which is a champagne with hints of peach. Moon Cruiser, which is described as a rich neon lilac with a cool moonlit cobalt shift. So that is way too complicated. I would say that this has like a light pink to a lilac kind of shift. Like a pink to a purple shift. Or maybe a warm purple to a cool purple shift, if that makes sense. Then last we have Solar Sailor, which is a very yellow kind of highlight. It is described as a sleek and radiant satin gold. Satin gold. I would say this is the kind of gold that has a lot of yellow in it. So very yellow gold. I think Solar Sailor and Mars Melter are my favorites from the non-multi-chrome highlighters. So this is how the full face turned out. I must say I really enjoyed everything. I mean, nothing out of these was not good. All of them were good. And I think I will be buying from Kaleidos in the future, provided they come up with things that interest me. Because this Alma Viva collection, I've seen people review it, and they say that lip glosses interest them. I'm not much of a lip gloss person, but if I were to wear a lip gloss, it would be hella sparkly and very pretty. Not the toned down crap that you see all over. The quads. I will say the purple quad does intrigue me, 
but right now not enough to spend money on it. So yeah, and people were right, those quads look so similar to the two that they already have in their line. So I'm not sure what the point of that was, but maybe it's their aesthetic, maybe that's the direction they're going to go in. Also another thing that I completely forgot to mention when I was talking about blushes, yes, I am one of those people that was disappointed by the blushes. Of course, they're not going to work on my skin tone. Why would I not be disappointed? So there, I thought I would just go ahead and mention that. Also, I tried to take these off with micellar water. That did not work. So these will have to be cleaned with something a little stronger. That means these are going to be those long lasting kind of eyeliners. So that's good for the customer who wants that. Okay, my cat is meowing. He needs to be let in. Please hold. Yes, sweetie. Come on. Come, baby. Come on. Good boy. Let's show your face to the camera. Oh, he says, okay, take me. There he is. He likes to roam around and explore my makeup. He's the best boy ever. Aw, the little paw. Why are you not purring? Are you unhappy? Should I just let you go? He says, let me go, human. Let me go. I need to explore. Oh, oh, careful. Okay. So, as I was uh, yammering on... Oh, yes. Lastly, I would just like to say that Kaleidos is one of those brands that have had nice launches in the past, but for a while now, their stuff has been a little underwhelming and there is a lot of gap between those launches so while some brands are churning out products every week and every month they have two launches this brand is taking it way too slow in my opinion just like so many people have been asking i would also appreciate if they came out with a nice large colorful eyeshadow palette i I actually like this formula and would love to see a nice innovative color story from them. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, that would be nice. Said nice too many times. In order to retain their international customers' interest, I think Kaleidos should listen to the customer and give them what they want. It's that simple. This is one of those brands whose past launches we can look back on and remember them with fondness and nostalgia because they are kind of old at this point. Which is my segue into mentioning that I am going to soon start posting about brands that we can look back on with some nostalgia, with some good memories. This is my segue into saying that I will be starting my nostalgic makeup series very soon or makeup archives whatever you want to call them where i will showcase some products from the past that i really like and maybe we can talk about how things change for those brands and how some of them are no longer available and some of them have changed significantly enough that it's like they're operating in a whole different market segment now which is interesting to look back on that will be coming very soon so if you're not subscribed already please subscribe and hit that thumbs up it will greatly help me out that is it for now and we will meet again in the next one bye bye